TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. If we go live and you happen to miss it, this is twitch.com. This is how I look. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to follow me. You just go on here. And you can replay the lives. We do watch kick exclusive stuff where we don't watch it on YouTube because YouTube be on that. So that's on you, man. If you want to come, if not, all right. Anyway, don't forget we do got merch. Yeah, get me. And we also got a Patreon. We post Monday through Friday, man. Um, we don't miss no days. And if we do, we always make them up, man. The link to all of that is down in the description below. And sh shout out to everybody on Patreon, man. We got 416 people over there, man. Because cause you can join Patreon and just see what I'm posting. It's, it's free to join, but if you want to watch stuff. You obviously got to pay, but it's free to join. Um, anyway, season four, episode five. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Let's get into it. Oh, this is negative. Matter of fact, everybody grab y'all pizzas. I got something that y'all don't got out there. This is ranch. Got me some food. I'm having a long night of recording reactions right now. Because as you all know, I'm on a seven day ban while I'm making this. As soon as I get off of that, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, y'all getting a lot. I got 14 videos recorded. This is the 15th right here. Nothing stops the motion. Last year, over 100,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales. Okay. With an average value of nearly £3,500, creditors are increasingly turning to the high court to get their money back. My bad, I didn't press pause. The total value of county court judgments issued against businesses in 2015 was 336 million. W reading. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are high court enforcement agents. They travel thousands of miles every week, collecting debts and seizing goods. Today, they're on their way to a dog kennel business in Crewe, Cheshire to recover a debt of over £3,000 owed to a supplier. Where are we off to, Vic? We are off to Thermal Dark Kennels. wonder if the owner's called Jack Russell. No, he's actually called David. It's David Routledge. If company director David Routledge can't or won't pay today, the agents can remove goods from his... You see what's crazy about this show? When there's business situations like this, y'all don't really got nothing to say in the comments. Y'all be cool. But you, if you really a businessman, you know that all of this is business. This whole show is based around business and business relationships gone wrong. <coughs> Even if it's a private tenant and a private landlord, that's a business relationship. Me living in this crib that I live in, you living in that crib, that's a business transaction. You pay, I, I stay. It's business. You you got to pay for what you what, what you do. Just because you've made it a home through the years, like, it doesn't mean it's not a business transaction. That is not, you don't live there. I mean, you don't, you don't own it. It's a business transaction. And if you've ruined a business relationship, and you haven't paid me monetarily, I got to come get that up out of you. I don't care what y'all talking about. <laughs> yes, some it's of the situations up. be real sad, but... And, but now, there are the situations on here that be just bogus landlords. Now, them is bogus, but a lot of it be like... To oh, cover well. the value of the debt. I reckon it's one of these little out units. Dog kennels. Hello. Shout out Duke and Kai Sinat. 
for putting us on these little little drinks. This is a little Sprite. It's a little. Hello there. Um, we're after Mr. David Routledge. Uh, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I need to speak to Mr. Routledge. Is that yourself? I'm one of them. Which one do you want? Uh, David. Which one? It's two of them. Right, OK. Director of the company. Director of uh, Thermal Dog Kennels. He's not here. Right, OK. Are you able to get him on the phone? No. We're at High Court Enforcement Agents. We're here to take control of goods. What goods? The goods that are in the premises at the moment. Thermal Dog Kennels haven't got any goods. Right, OK. Yeah, well, you would need to get him on the phone. What's Thermal Dog Kennels uh, supposed to owe? Well, the total amount at the moment, so you need to get Mr. Outledge on the phone. No, I can't. It's no, good. OK, that's fine. Yeah. Can you start doing an inventory of goods? Yeah. This Mr. Routledge claims he isn't the David Routledge. Yeah, he playing too many games. Like, this type of stuff, like, it's like, I'm coming real smart. He coming with this business acclimate that he can just, he can just, oh, no, I can't get him. I can't do this. Okay, well, hey, look at this paperwork and let me do my job. <laughs> Routledge, director of the debtor company <laughs> they're looking for. You need to start cooperating yeah, with us, sir. Yeah, now, now no. come on, gentlemen. No, no, carry on doing yeah. what we're doing, sir. You are right. You'll leave these premises. No, 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 no. Please, please. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not trespassing at all. <laughs> well, you thought you had privilege in here? No, sir. It's a high court. We got the most privilege. I like when they do it to business owners like this, though. No, please, no, please don't touch me. Don't I'll touch me. Touch you. I'll do more than touch you. I don't care who you are or what you're doing. There oh. is nothing here of thermal dog kennels. Mm. If you look at the record. Can you stand back, please, sir? No, I will not stand, stand back? back. Will you leave our premises? I'm not going anywhere, sir. You're not getting our premises. Right. Right, come on. Let's see what can I saw to first. Mr. Rodlich, the on company's house is selective. Are there meats touching? I'm like a meat lover's pizza. Like, what's going on? Pause. Because I'm eating one. Pause. Sir, it's ready. Can you stop leaning on me, yes. please, sir? No, I won't. We leave okay. these premises. Move this man out yeah, of the way. No, it's fine. I'll, you can talk to me, sir. For a start, high court enforcement mm. is nothing but a company. You're not a high court. I want, to well, see, sorry, we, sir. We, I want to see your bailey certificate for a start. No problem at all, sir. Come on, let me see it. No, and then sir. I want to see the, the, the writ and the authority. Come on, sir. Who are you, sir? Uh, well, Who are you? I'm me. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I'm not showing you anything, okay. sir. Right, and I'm not. Okay. And I'm telling you to. And I'm not going anywhere sense. until you cooperate with us. Well, I don't have to cooperate with you. I'm exactly, sir. I've told you. Okay. These are so the what I'll do is I'll continue doing my job. You will, will until you? until you start cooperating with us. Sir. I'm not cooperating okay. with you because you're. Okay. Sir, don't touch me again. I went more do than not touch, touch you. Me again. I find I'll you have you arrested. I'll have me arrested. Go on. Okay. I'm a 72 year old gentleman you're with absent. a heart complaint. Do you think the police are going to be very interested in me? Boy, you are on tape using all the privilege you got. This is privilege at its finest. When they see a big burly thug like you oh, threatening me. Yes. It's nothing to what else will be in your face you carry on. Pause. Sometimes when you work in pairs, one person get, gets more abuse than the other. We get it every day. Every single day. And it doesn't bother us. I don't go home crying at night because someone says they don't like me. I move on to the next job and get over it. Why be nice, sir? Why am I like this? Why be because nice, sir? It's quite clearly there are notices all over the mm -hmm. place. I tell you, this has nothing mm -hmm. to do with mm -hmm. thermal dog well, kennels. You need to work with us then, sir. Mr. Routledge claims that thermal dog kennels is not based at the address and is nothing to do with him. We have hundreds of companies mm -hmm. that have got registered office here. Mm -hmm. okay. I find your whole attitude mm -hmm. aggressive and un. I'm sorry, sir. Haven't you, haven't you just tried to push me out of the building? Yes, I'm in my personal you. space, sir. Come on, I want you. I want you to have me arrested. I want you to charge me. Come on. Did you mind Come on, big man. Oh God, I would have called the police already. If this is my job, you you taunting me like this? You trying to H O E me? You trying to? You think I'm a B I T C H and I won't do this to you? You're out of there. 74 or not, you better go find on, God man. in there. Come on, you can't, can you? Because you're a living, living little yellow twat. You can tell signs of when people are Boy, going to be aggressive just out. by the way that the body language is, by the way that they get into your personal space immediately. And you've got to think one step ahead of trying to get this message clearly to them that regardless what behavior is going to happen, we're going to be doing the job, we're going to be executing the writ. Just step aside, I'll have a come with you, all right? Yes. Let's start from the beginning. I'm quite happy to show you a series of events which are shown there's lots of companies with red right. glasses. Yeah. Right. Yes. But that man was at his premises. That's fine, sir. He can deal with me. He yes. can deal with yes. me. Yes, I think oh, you can. We, we can go in the back and, uh, in your yes. office. 
With the situation escalating, Stuart talks to the police. Okay, man. As we've, um... Oh, God, if I was Stuart, I would have 999, hello? <laughs> because at this point, it's principal. You're not going to talk to me like that. <laughs> gone to do an inventory of goods and um, he's becoming very aggressive trying to throw us out of the building um, so we're here to continue our job regardless of the situation Vic takes Mr Routledge aside to try and find out more about the company that owes the money is David is he your son yes okay so I'm David senior right both, both, grass both. Okay, and that's fine. clear as throat for more person at, at some yes, point before yes. it ceased trading probably two years ago but oh. it's yes it's father counts uh, I come to this house, but he has no assets at all. It's just a trading company. Just as Vic seems to be making progress, Stuart's arrival changes Mr. Routledge's attitude. Why is he still on the premises? I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, sir. Another man arrives in the office. Gentlemen, yeah. this man's totally intimidated me, mm -hmm. and uh, he's threatened me. How have I threatened just, you, sir? Yes, you I think you need to calm down, sir. That he is a disabled person with a serious heart condition. Mm -hmm. And that your threats here yeah. can threats? actually invoke into a heart what attack. What threats yes. are that, sir? By simply there by your intimidation, yes. by sound You, you are threats. intimidated. By I'm here to do my job, sir. Yes. You're not. If, if you, you want to cooperate, you're intimidating. If you want to cooperate, sir. Look, I told you, right, you are intimidated. I don't have to cooperate. Now, this is a spooky thing, bro. Like, good thing you on camera and witness it. You got your partner with you. and Because, like, this could turn bad. I, I priv I'm telling you, this is privilege. The only thing, bro, missing is... <laughs> A slur at this point, like ah. Uh, well, that you. You that attitude, sir, is getting you to here. Right, ignore right. what I'm saying, then, right. sir. You ignore what I'm the saying, sir. Would you please get this man yes. out? I'm not going anywhere, sir. So you can we, deal we, with we, it. Not going I'm not going, going anywhere, sir. Right, we'll see about that. Out. No, get out. Calm down, sir. Calm down. Get him out. Get him out. I'm not going anywhere, sir. Get him out. Come on. You should have this. Get off. Get off. Oh, violence now. Hold it. Clenched fist, then. Clenched fist. No, I'm having. With the threats escalating, will Stuart and Vic? I'm not even sure how Stuart is able to keep his composure. He's been assaulted, all type of stuff, like bro. Be able to get the three thousand pounds they came for. High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor were in Cheshire with a writ to recover £3,000 from a company called Thermal Dog Kennels. We're after Mr David Routledge. The man they met, Mr Routledge, had the same surname as the company director of Thermal Dog Kennels, but denied that he was him. Are you able to get him on the phone? You, you know what's crazy? I know there's going to be somebody in the comments like... My bad, bro. I had to click off, man. I can't stand the sound of you eating. And it's on mute. You can't even hear me eating. It's on mute. So for you, whoever's typing that right now, I wish you the best, man. <laughs> if you finish that comment, I'm, I'm deleting. I'm, I'm, I'm you out of here. <laughs> Mr. Routledge didn't want to cooperate. Now, now no. come on, gentlemen. No, no, carry on doing no. what we're doing, sir. He then tried to get Stuart out of the premises. Come on, big man. Come on. You can't, can you? Because you're a living, living little yellow twat. Then another man arrived. Tensions rose, and Mr. Routledge made threats against Stuart. Get off the bench. Get off the bench. Oh, 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 violence now. Oh, the clenched fist then. Oh, I'm having you now. He's talking about clenched fist, fist. He has a phone in his hand. How does he clench his fist with a phone and paperwork? Like, it don't even matter. You're on camera. <laughs> now the agents need to calm the situation down so they can resolve this the complicated case. Cameras don't even case. matter in this. Stuart takes the man who recently arrived to. No lie, if Stuart would have would have like lost his temper in this situation, I wouldn't even be mad. Like, I, I understand. One side. Well, we're here to speak to David Routledge. The David Routledge that you're okay. after is up in North. We need to speak to him and we need to see some documentation for what actually belongs to this company. Who are you, sorry, sir? My name's John Routledge. I'm the owner of all this stuff here. 
John Routledge tells the agents he's the director of an entirely different dog kennel business, trading from the same address. If this is the case, the agents won't be able to seize any assets, but they need proof. This is a lease agreement. Lies. It goes to around on lease here to Animal Housing Solutions. Mm -hmm. The lease proves that a new business, Animal Housing Solutions, is indeed trading from the address, okay. as John okay. Routledge says. And the equipment on the premises is hired out from a different company. The assets on site don't belong to thermal dog kennels, and so they can't be seized. I'm just looking at this. But as the company named on the writ is still listed as trading from the address, the agents have the right to stay on the premises to conclude their inquiries. I now require you now to leave these premises, please. We won't be leaving, sir. Head out through that door now. The problem is they're still active on companies' houses mm. trading from here. That is just, that, that's the problem we're sitting with today. The company's house is only just simply there as a... As a an entity, entity, exactly. The active address is here on company's house. It shows that it's here. Yes. And we didn't make up that information. Despite John Routledge's protests, the agents won't leave until they've tried to find out where the director of Thermal Dog Kennels... I ain't even gonna lie, the Routledge's is crazy. David Routledge is. So is the defendant we're looking for, which is not trading from here, mm -hmm. that's your dad? No, yeah, he's my dad. Is this your dad? Oh, yes. Is it your brother then? Yes. Right. Who's up north? Yeah. Where about? He's up in Leeds. Have you got a contact number for him? Yes, but we're not going to give it to yeah. him. With no company assets there to seize and no help from the family in contacting David Routledge Jr., Stuart and Vic have no choice but to leave empty-handed. All right, see you later. I ain't gonna lie, that's real pain. Stuart, you can't lose the battle like that. You should have called the police. Get you a little win in somewhere. God damn. The issue we got is it's thermal dog kennels, and when we walk in there, there's kennel equipment, there's cages, yeah. there's photos of dogs. It's just the way they came across. You know, they they weren't forthcoming with any information. They know the person. It's obviously family. We'll just take it through our trace department and see where we end up. Oh, so now it's the site. It's now y'all don't want to look at me eating. It's, I'm on 5% of the screen. Look at the other 95, G. Why y'all want me? That's crazy. Over the last three years, homelessness among ethnic minority communities has risen much faster than in the general population. This dramatic increase has caused a huge rise in the number of households from minority communities living in temporary accommodation. Fifty-five percent of people living in temporary accommodations come from the ethnic minority background. Barnet, North London. High Court Enforcement Agent Steve Pinner and his son Ben are on their way to carry out an eviction. We have a writ of possession. We are going to a flat in Brunswick Park Road. A notice of eviction has already been sent to the tenant by the county court, but the landlord has upgraded it to the High Court to speed up the process. Let's see what we can do. The tenant has been living in the flats for over four years. She's in rent arrears, but Ben and Steve aren't instructed to collect payment. They are here to repossess the property today. It's that one with the extension lead going out the house. That's to use the communal electric. That's running through a letterbox. That's dangerous. Sometimes we see something like a, an extension lead coming out of the letterbox you know before you get into the flat there's something not right hey, there's no electricity. with the person or even the property there is something not correct hello hello madam my name is ben i'm a high court enforcement officer i've been sent to repossess the property madam 
Would you like me to unplug the plug before you open the door? Hello? I'm going to unplug the plug, yes? Okay, if you want to open the door now. Why are you coming here? I'm here by the High Court to repossess the property, to evict you, madam. I have the relevant paperwork if you'd like to open the door. Why don't you open that door, they're in there. Okay, madam, this conversation would be much easier if you open the door. Would you like to open the door? I don't receive an idea. Okay, madam, I'm not having any further conversation until you open the door. Can you tell me what order? Yes, if you can read it through that spy hole. No, no, madam, open the door. This is just getting ridiculous. It's, it's, uh, or I can have the door opened for you if you don't want to open it for me. I'd much prefer you to open it, though. That's better. This is the paper. This is from the High Court. And what happens is, you have an hour now to collect some personal effects, medication, items to last you a few days. I didn't receive it before. Madam, OK, let me explain. You was ordered by the county court to leave, yeah. and you didn't leave. Yeah, I was the, the clock, in the way. Madam, can't, hold on, hold on. They're you did have a court order. It was slammed. an order possession saying that you should leave by a said date. Obviously, because you didn't leave, the client has asked to transfer it to the High Court rather than transferring it to the County Court bailiff to come. We are coming instead. We'll have to leave the door open, though. I need to come in. I don't want to... What's behind the door? Wow. Man, you need some steel toe boots. Yeah. Do you live Look here on your own? Have you got anyone that can come and help you? I don't have anything. You don't have anything? Have you started to pack already, or...? Yeah, I've come in my backpack. In my backpack. Ben leaves the tenant to pack, but as he looks around the flat, he's in for a shock. Wow, this is something else. <coughs> it's just like a version of hoarding. There's this rubbish everywhere. I don't know how people can live like this. Yeah, situations like this, like, man, like, you're ruining the property. Get out. But I wouldn't even, like... Everyone goes through life differently. When you go down the council, madam, speak to them about arranging people to come and collect all of this. People will come get it for you? Steve decides to investigate the power cable that came through the letterbox. Everything is run off the communal electricity. The fridge, hot plate, microwave, there's probably no lights. There's three microwaves, one there. Two. Yeah, I know. Try a light switch, the electric won't work. Told ya. The boiler's not on, obviously. Is there no electricity in this flat, madam? How comes? Not only, like, um, electricity. Everything is broken. Yeah, but this is the electricity from outside, isn't it? When you enter a property, you're looking for things that might be out of the ordinary. Sometimes they're... What's crazy is the crazy thing about what she's doing, like, OK, everybody do that sometimes. Times get hard. But it's like... She left it plugged in. She wasn't even trying to do it sneakily. She just left it plugged in. Probably plugged in for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Instead of like, when I need to use something, let me go run and plug it in. And then unplug it when I'm done. Boxes all stacked up. Food stacked up. Uh, no utilities in the... No lights working and things like that. She's down which She's brings you on. to the, the point where the tenant may be vulnerable or not yeah. sure of themselves, so you have to be very careful. Hi, nice to meet you, sir. As the tenant continues to pack, the landlord's agent arrives. We're in talking to her, explained the situation to her, told her that she has an hour to get her personal effects together, and she's going to have to come back and clear that out. If you'd like me to show okay. you. OK. Well, I mean, we, we haven't... We've been trying to raise some with her for now. The owners are in the state of the world. is so manage the property when we've been able to, but she's not allowed us in for... The electricity doesn't she's work. She's not allowed us in for a safety certificate. She has an outside. extension lead running off outside for everything. We've been pleading with her through the letterbox. Um, I mean, never forced entry, ever. We've said, you know, look, you know, we'll, let's help you. With you. For your safety, we need to get... You're not coming, you're not coming. She's screaming at the, at the owners of the And it's their, it's their property, they're trying to help her.
concerned about the tenants' welfare. Have you got anywhere to take all of this stuff to, madam? No. You don't have a place. I just don't know what you're going to do with all of this. I really don't. Because you've got... Ben, let her move in then. You talking like you trying to find a wife. What you, you got I see lots on? of stuff. You need everything. You're going to need to make arrangements to come back and get all of this. But it's not going to be a quick process. Have you got not family or friends that can come and help you? No. When we evict vulnerable people, it's hard because we don't know if they're going to get the help they need, um, whether that's down to the fact that they won't ask for it or the fact that they simply aren't getting the help from the necessary authorities. Madam, I understand this is very distressing for you, but we need to sort of work out a game plan of what you're going to do in your next steps. She's not trying to hear that right now, man. Would you like me to help you? Would you like me to lift that over? Can I help in any way? really heavy. Is there anything else you need to take, madam? No? Have you got the piece of paper he gave you? You need that if you're going to the council. The tenant is now homeless. She must appeal to the local council for emergency accommodation. I don't think that's going to be good, man. That process. We'll find out at the end, but the way she moving... She ain't got no kids or nothing either. And she, you know. I don't even like saying that. What about all your other stuff in the property? She doesn't seem like she's. Then she's not high on the priority list, is she? Probably. The council. If you explain to the council. She embarrassed. I said to her, you need to go to the... When you walk on grass and this is perfectly good sidewalk right there, you're, nothing, you're just trying to get out of there. Council, you need to do this. You need, she says, don't care. Doesn't matter. She will not have gone to the council. I, I can almost guarantee she... I don't know where she's, she's gone. Go well, she will just go to... Uh, if she knows somebody or somewhere or she, I don't yeah. know. That's what's so sad about it. The tenant must collect the contents of the flat within a month, or she could lose all her possessions for good. As you can see, we're going to be at least another month before we can legitimately remove all of her, her stuff. That puts another month on top of before we can start any refurbishment work. So, you know, it goes on. The eviction is complete. I need you to sign this just to say that we've been here, done what we're supposed to do. But Steve and Ben are still concerned about the tenant. See, they take... and this is that above and beyond approach right here. Like, y'all gonna follow her with the van, like, and see what's going on. Like, she, like, I'm, my job done. At this point, I'm going to what? Give me like a little, like a little kebab or something, a little pie, minced meat, whatever. Take an unusual step and right. decide to try and track her down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there and have a look down there, see if we can get round that way. Maybe she feels bombarded by all the cameras. Let's see if she's hiding, sitting, but I don't think she will be. It's always difficult if you have to evict someone that's, that's a vulnerable person, because if they're that vulnerable, they may not understand the situation. Um, so somebody has to try and get them to understand it. She just disappeared. She might have got a bus. But what can we do? You know, you can't... You can only do so much. There's a minute. You know, we're struggling to find her. After driving around the area, there's no sign of the tenant. I don't know what's going to happen to her. She now she's disappeared waiting. and, like, it's... Will she go to the council? She didn't seem that bothered when we said about going to the council. Will she be sleeping on the streets tonight. I, I feel like I need closure. I need to know where she's gone or if she's OK. But I don't know what more I can do to try and find her. I mean, we've done the job that we've been paid for, but then there's us personally as people think, you know, yes, the job's the job, but at the end of the day, we hope they're going in the right direction to get help and move onwards. 
Steve and Ben have faced an emotional eviction. But in Stuart and Vic's next case, they meet a debtor in denial. Push me for it. Number of county. Yeah. We got another one. Stuart having a long day. The number of county court judgments issued against consumers in England and Wales has reached the highest level since the financial crisis in 2008. By the end of the decade, personal debt is set to reach £2.5 trillion, with each adult in the UK owing an average £2.5 trillion, with each Okay, good Reebok drip. Adult in the UK owing an average of nearly fifty thousand pounds. That's insane to hear the numbers out loud. Last year, over seven hundred thousand county court judgments were issued against consumers in England and Wales. High court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in the Worcestershire countryside. <coughs> The Malvern Hills, Vic. The Malvern Hills. They're on their way to collect a debt from a man who purchased a car engine from an online auction website, but failed to pay the seller. We are going to see Mr. Clive Herbert. He ran off on the plane. And who's it owed to? A private, private individual. Yeah. Two, three. Aha, uh -huh, here we are. With the defenderies. If Mr. Herbert can't or won't pay today, we'll take the agents away. have the right to seize personal assets to offset the debt. He got some stuff. Nobody seems to be at home. So Vic decides to do. Looks like he a farmer too. I know he got that that shot shotgun on him. Some detective work. Morning. Hello. Uh, Mr. Herbert, have you got a contact number for him? Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll give him a ring. Vic gets the debtor, Mr. Herbert, on the phone. Hi, is that Mr. Clive Herbert? Hi, morning, sir. My name is Mr. Victor. I'm a high court enforcement agent. Uh, would you be able to return to the property? No. No. Uh, I've got a high court writ here, sir, with outstanding balance of three thousand two hundred and nineteen pounds and twenty-seven pence. What's this for? I don't even know what you're talking about. I haven't even received any court papers for it. Well, you've got my number. I'm going to give you twenty minutes to raise the funds. If not, we will be funding transport, sir, to remove the vehicles on the drive. They don't belong to me. They belong to my son. You can't take stuff that doesn't belong to you. The outstanding balance that needs to be paid in full is £3,219.27. Sounds like you need to come home and handle your business, then your problem. You it's not even, even £2,000. It's been trying. Oh, so you know about it then? Yes, I know about it. Oh, well, no, no, but you just told me five minutes ago you, you know nothing about it. So I'm not. I, I, I haven't received the paperwork from the right. court. I'm, I'm appealing against the case. So I've got an active high court here. No, 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 I've got an active high court here. No, 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 no,
How have we not got the correct paperwork? So we've got a High Court writ. They said you can't take anything away. Says who? The police. You do know that the police are only here for breach of the peace, so they're not here to stop us they're doing they're our they're job. They're, they're, they're on their way now. No problem at all, so Is we'll speak to you shortly. Are, are you making your way back? I'm on my way there to you now. Okay, okay. we'll look forward to seeing you shortly. Stuart and Vic have encountered a lot of negativity this episode and, and and this is what it's all about. This is what I come to see. I don't know for a point in this it was too positive. Like what's going on? Let's get negativity. The police to arrive. But then Clive's son turns up. Hello there, sir. So you're the son, are you? Yeah, we're High Court Enforcement Agents. Uh, your dad said he's on his way back. Um, payment needs to be made. If not, goods are getting removed, including the defender. That's mine. Is it, have you got any documentation for it? I have good documentation for that. Are you able Do to come and grab it? Yeah. Okay. Cheers, mate. If Clive's son can prove the cars on the driveway belong to him, the agents won't be able to seize them. Have you got I, a receipt I for it? I think yeah, we haven't got receipts for anything. We don't do receipts. Mm. The son has logbooks, but these are not proof of ownership. With no receipts, the vehicles can be seized. It will be removed then. <laughs> you ain't taking them. But... No, we don't have to, but we need payment. The agents have been on the property for 45 minutes, and there's still no sign of Mr. Herbert. Police then, there. The police arrive. Morning, officers. Got a high court writ to take control of goods unless payment's been made. Yeah, I think he's under the impression he's still in, in court. No, the CCJ has been awarded against him, so it's now a writ of control, which means if the full balance is not paid, we will be removing goods. What well, wrong? Dang, man, Stuart that's turns keys detective and, and finds keys to other cars. He walks down the road to see if there are signs of any other vehicles. He's waiting now to see what he turns up in. Uh, there's keys inside for a 2011 Chevy Camaro. There's also a 55 plate Range Rover Vogue. But then, Mr. Herbert turns Come up on walking. foot. Mr. Herbert, Mr. Herbert, Mr. Kraken High Court Enforcement Agent. Um, hey, Mr. Herbert, a wild boy, man. You can't duck this. I just seen them spend blocks to go find your car. Uh, my colleagues are with, uh, with the police at the moment <coughs> regarding this outstanding writ, sir. I was just from the court. They said that I got every right to appeal, then You got every right to appeal, sir, yeah. yeah. Well, at the moment, it's still active. Well, so we're here now to collect payment or take control of goods, sir. Well, well, the stuff don't belong to me. What about the goods inside your property, sir? Eh? What about the goods inside your property? Everything. Everything belongs to my son. Everything? Yeah, everything, my son. everything? Yeah. Right, OK. Tell me to take control of goods, sir, which we will be doing unless payment's made. If all this stuff belongs to my son, you can't take nothing. Yes, I will take it, and you've got seven days to prove to the court. You can't take anything if it belongs to... Sir, I need to make you aware, if your appeal goes through, you get your money refunded. But the fact of the matter is, we're here now to execute a rate of control. Hey, can they take stuff? Is this your address? Yeah, which is my address. Mm. Yeah. But the stuff, everything belongs to him. In this job, you've got to think, are they being truthful? Are they being honest? Are they actually at this address? What yeah. goods do they actually own? And that's the exciting it's, part of the job. It's, it's going to be hard for me to believe your son is this financially set up and stable. But, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to judge or nothing like that. But a whole house, 19 cars. Like, what what your son do for a job, then? Can I get... Mr. Herbert finally you know? starts to discuss the debt with the agents. I bought an engine for £2,000 off eBay. We put it in the van. The engine was scrap, right? So... I paid on credit card and I stopped the payment. And he went to court to get his two thousand pound right, and they went against me in court. Right, so As you, you just come now, and I yeah. understand well, it's a bit of a shock. So what I'll be doing is I'll be giving you a further twenty minutes to raise some funds. If not, I'll be ringing recovery for the removal of that Defender One Ten right, so and the computer equipment that you've got. Can yeah. they do this? If they court, right? You've got to send me some sort of. We evidence. have done, sir. Done, I haven't sir. received have any done. paperwork. Right, paperwork has been sent. Can you prove it then? I, uh, I swear, yeah. I swear on my son's life, it's I have not received no paperwork. You don't need to swear on anyone's court. life. That's your notice of enforcement, okay. sir, and that's when it was sent. We're here to execute high court rate control, which you will be doing unless payment's made. It's yeah, different when the police ain't on your side. With the you deadline call set, Stuart starts to make an inventory of goods. Hurts. Don't kick my furniture. Like, don't kick my furniture. I'm not kicking any furniture. Don't again. kick the furniture. Do not touch me again, don't sir. Don't kick the furniture. I advise you do not touch me again. 
Off my chair. I'm in the middle of taking control, hey. good, sir. No, stand up then. Stand oh. up. I have asked you, politely, to leak it off the chair. I will do, yes, but you touch me again, sir. Let's not escalate things, eh? There's no need for it. When you're faced with an aggressive confrontation, the thing that you've got to think about is, what am I going to do to get this resolved? So being calm and controlling with the situation leaves you still in control, and that's when they're going to start thinking, right, he's not leaving. I best start thinking about getting that's a payment. That's my chair. Mr. Yeah. Herbert still maintains that all the goods in the house belong to his son. He's taking. She just said that's my chair. Oh, yep. We need to see some evidence, then, sir. I've already explained this it's to you. Got, it's Scott's computer. Yeah. Oh, we need to see some evidence of that, sir. But as the agents start to remove assets, Mr. Herbert's attitude suddenly changes. Of course. How much is it, then? How much you want? Total amount outstanding, sir, it's three thousand nine hundred and fifty seven pounds. I don't even know two thousand pounds. Yeah, but sadly, sir, it's gone to the high court. To the high so court. You are liable for high court charges. A thousand pounds? More it's than a little bit more than that, sir. Hey. <laughs> You said a thousand pounds? No, no. A little bit more, sir. Uh, Three and nine. Almost four. Four thousand pounds. Three thousand nine hundred and fifty. County court costs and high court fees have almost doubled the debt. I can't make that much payment. No, we need the full amount, sir. So if I give you a check there, you'll go. No. We'll have to be cleared funds, sir. Yeah, but Debit no card, check. tax transfer. The agents have been at the house for almost two hours. Mr. Herbert has finally agreed to raise the cash. See if this card works. Can you take a payment for me, mate, please? Mr. Herbert, I hope you're not playing no games in here. You know if that car work or not. What do you mean, see if it works? Right, sir, that's gone through. I've written down the, your three days. You we'll see on your bank statement. Right, we'll be on our way. I need you get on with the rest of your day. Oh, Mr. Herbert is on... Damn, 4,000 in one rip. That'd make me sick, 100%. Happy about paying the it. debt and the additional costs. I am the victim here. Um, somebody sold me an engine for two thousand. He looking at his dad like, oh my god, this is the man who created friction with my mom, and here I am, looking at him like, man, you 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 the victim, dad? Thousand pounds. He's got his two thousand pounds for a scrap engine. Um, I've I've lost. I've gone to court, lost it. I you know I've, I'm absolutely gutted. And now I've paid four thousand pounds. If that isn't daylight robbery. Is that justice for you? Stuart and Vic got the result they came for. The, the defendant... There's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. You pay for an engine, you, you stop the payment, but did you give the engine back? That's the part of the story that we don't have. Did you give the engine back? Did you send the engine back? Did you... You should have filed a court blank and blank. Paid on credit card, thought he got clever, phoned the bank and cancelled it. 10 out of 10 for the claimant. He, yeah. he went down the right route, went through the legal system, and uh, we went there today and we got what we were asked to do. So he can kick and scream all he wants about, about this, but at the end of the day, justice has been served. Non-payment of rent remains the biggest problem facing landlords across the country, really with the number of tenants in severe rent arrears continuing to rise. 37% of landlords have experienced rent arrears in the last year, forcing many to apply to have their tenants evicted. One in five landlords are worried their tenants won't be able to keep up with their rental payment. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on their way to carry out an eviction. The landlord's agent claims the tenant, David Unali, hasn't paid rent oh, for seven together months. Now, huh? Let's go. So this is how they end the shows now, with them together, okay. W format. He's Don't y'all owe them money? DHL or DGL? Or at the property to meet Paul and Steve. Hello, sir. I'm Paul. Hi. We've now got the paperwork from the court, so we'll go into action. Okay. Just give us a few minutes, so if he is in, yeah. that few minutes of you not be, being there is quite helpful. No problem at all. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. <clears throat> Paul and Steve aren't here to collect the arrears. Like They're here to evict Mr Anali today. But this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. Maybe. 
It's only like eight minutes left. The agents have been given a key by the landlord to access the property. Mr. Inali. But there's a problem. It don't work. I'll get key in it. It's jammed. They it's jammed. It. Mr. Inali. The door has been locked from the inside. Mr. Anali! Whether you answer the door or not, they got a locksmith, don't they, to come take that apart? I just have to gain access another way, i.e. force it. It seems Mr. Anali has locked himself in the flat. Mr. Anali, we're High Court enforcement. Will you open the door, please? Well, we need to get the locks in the have up here. Have a quick word. With the agent. He decides if we just bring a couple of bars up. Yeah. OK. While Steve goes to talk to the landlord's agent about forcing entry, Paul gives the tenant an ultimatum. Can you open the door, please, or are we going to break in? We're not going to go away, so will you please open the door? Right. Fast forward the situation. Tenants want, always want to buy more time because this is judgment day. They bury their head in the sand. This is never going to happen. And with, from the knock on the door, they know that this is going to happen. We've been asked if we could just hold on, breaking the door down. So the gentleman's going to try and talk to him. The landlord's agent tries to get Mr. Anali to open the door. David? Hello, David? There's still no answer. So the landlord's agent gives Steve the go-ahead to break in. I just need to take it off. Yeah. We'll get him to come and repair it. He owes you £6,000, doesn't he? He owes us in total £7,000. How, how many months? He hasn't paid anything since last July, June. Why, why have you been so patient? Well, he, he said that he's had some issues with um, illness and this, that, and the other. Then he said that he's got money coming from his parents. Then we said, OK, fine, you know, we'll, we'll wait on for that. And then he just refuses to pay. I feel like it's always a lie. I'm sick now, I got money waiting on my parents. It's a lie. Paul and live for free as long as I can. Steve have no option but to force entry. You can open the door now? No? But even if they get into the flat, will they be able to get the tenant out? I feel like on this episode, man, everything was like, there was no situation where I was like, oh, man, that's bogus. No, everything's warranted in this one. Bowhill and Steve Pinner. I'm not gonna lie, we do not need a recount. Mr. Anali. Or we're not gonna go away. With no response. No. We don't need a recap. Okay, here we go. Hello, good morning. We're High Court Enforcement. And we come to repossess your property today. It would have been nice if you'd have opened the door for us. Okay. Oh man, he looks. He may look a little scared, but he also looked like he could be at risk. So you understand why we're here? Can I have a couple of these? No, no, no. Can I, can I explain it? Yeah. I'm telling you what's now going to happen. You've got half an hour to get personal effects in a bag, only half an hour, and you'll be evicted. After that, you'll have to make an arrangement with the landlord, who I think has been eminently fair with you, and we know we can see what he's up against because we've had to break into it today. It is now 20 to 1, 10 past 1, you're out. So just do it. Get on and do it. Make an arrangement with the landlord to come back at a, another day in the next few days to clear the rest of your stuff out. Start packing. Paul and Steve want to get Mr. Unali out of the flat as quickly as possible. Make sure you have passports, yeah, identification, any medication that you're going to need for a couple of days. And then you can make the arrangement to come back and collect the rest of your stuff. 
Dang, they can't even fix the door, quick. The flat is crammed with Mr. Unali's belongings. He has a right to return for a few hours later in the week to collect them, but he says he needs more time. I just need two days, you know? I can't do it. You're not allowed back in the building. If I, if I find out from any of the tenants that you come back into the building or into, into, into in the, the courtyard. I just ask if you say no. Can you listen to me, please? You need to get some friends here to help you pack your things up because this man is only going to allow four hours for you to move your stuff. Mr. Unali wants a couple of days to clear his stuff, but having not... Bro, he didn't have to break down the door. You owe him X amount of dollars. Like, no. You know. Received any rent for seven months, the landlord has run out not of patience. Not another day. I haven't received one single penny of rent from this place since June. That's unfair. You have to understand that. I understand that. I do I'm trying to, that. I'm trying to help you as much as possible. I try to be as nice as possible, okay? So you've got them until Saturday, until 12 o'clock, and that's it. 12 to 4, that's it. You don't have anything after that. I'm sorry. That's not right. I always remember the fact that there are two sides. No, that's right. Sides to the coin. And I don't really understand the mindset of tenants. That's right. Who think that it's okay not to pay the rent and for them not to consider the landlord's dire strait. Mr. Unali right. finally right. starts to pack. It affected us quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's nearly £8,000 that he owes us. Um, and now with court fees and everything else, you're looking at around about, you know, £9,000, £10,000 that he, in total that it's cost us just to get him out. But, it, you know, it's, it's irrelevant to him. He doesn't care. So I'm saying, man, I saw all a business transaction. When there's money involved, there's a business transaction. And that's what some people don't be understanding when they be in the comments in this, man. This is all a business transaction. <coughs> well, business relationships go awry and, and, and hey if y'all had a business mindset some of y'all put yourself in a businessman's mindset put yourself in a landlord's shoes private landlord shoes not a mass big huge company just like a regular person like me or you we get an extra flat we work hard we get a flat to rent out we we thinking, oh, yeah, this is easy money. It's residual income. Like, it's always going to be there. And somebody sitting in your crib for six months playing with you. Like, go, oh, bro. Get, I don't care what's going on. Get out. Like, yeah, I'll be a little patient. Like, it's, it's, it's situations with this. Get out. The girl, get out. <laughs> like, get out. It's doing? our own fault that we, you know, trusted him. But, you know, you live and learn. Mr. Unali's time in the flat is up, but he's still worried about how he's going to move all his belongings. <coughs> Mr. Unali is giving me a vibe. Uh, I'm not sure I can do it Saturday. You know? have to speak to the landlord. He said on Saturday nothing. Just make it work then. Huh? Just make it work. Right, you have to. If you don't got no choice, what? what? Yeah, I don't know how. I'm having problem everywhere. It seems everything, everything is going to fucking damage. Everything is going to hell. Mr. Unali is now homeless. If you look at the cost of the eviction... I already know that man is a male, no kids, no nothing. Council's not helping. The landlord's probably near £9,000 down the pan. And this guy has mistaken kindness for weakness and has taken advantage. These proceedings have gone on since last July. So I haven't got much sympathy with him because it's never going to be the right day and it's always going to be somebody else's fault. You can't change the mindset of people like that. Mr. Herbert did not contest the payment to the agents, figures. Thermal Dog Kennel is still listed as an active company. Figures. Pursuing the debt. Figures. Next oh, that's time. it? Alright. Right. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. Me go.